Bah! Guys, I forgot to do one important thing before this goes off to the shop. While Mitsubishi felt balance shafts were an important part for a smooth idle, performance-minded people usually prefer to eliminate them because they can be a very costly point of failure. Before you tackle a balance shaft removal, you need to pay attention to how your oiling system works. I'm cracking back into this thing to knock the bearings out of it, and I figured I'd bring you along. This is the bearing for the oil shaft. The oil shaft is also called the rear shaft, and it's closest to the oil pan. Here's the oil shaft. You can see the front oil hole between the journals, which receives oil from the pump and supplies the rear journal with oil. The oil shaft is hollow in the middle and it serves as an oil gallery. That's why the inner bearing in the block doesn't need oil holes. This is a 7 bolt front case. It has no business on this block, and I'll tell you why later. It's just what I have. I just wanted to show you where the oil shaft is oriented. Since that one bearing doesn't spew oil, you don't need to mess with it. I'm not being careful because I don't care what happens to these bearings or this balance shaft. The shafts are going away anyway. This is the front shaft. This one's oiled by the block, so no oil holes. Because the outer journal butts up to the front case where the snout of the shaft protrudes, you've got this oil journal that goes on the shaft, and an oil seal that squishes between it and the front case to prevent oil from leaking everywhere. You can see a groove in the oil journal, and you can flip it around the other way if it's cut in too deeply. The front shaft receives its oil supply from the block. There are oil holes on each bearing for the front shaft. To prevent causing an oil pressure problem with the shafts removed, you have to block those oil holes off. The easiest way to do this is to flip those bearings around inside the block. Not everyone has access to a bearing driver, but you can use the front shaft to drive the bearings out. The outside journal of the front shaft is turned flat with a pretty good edge on it. You just tap around the outside of the bearings to get them started, then drive them out. Of course, this destroys the balance shaft, preventing it from ever being used again, but who cares? You want to start with the outer bearing of the front shaft to give you additional clearance while working with the inner bearing of the front shaft. The clearance inside the block is tight, so it's a good idea to have a magnet around when doing this to fish them out. Now for the inner bearing. The same process applies. The inner bearing is a little bit easier to work with because it's a tad smaller than the outer bearing. So there's a larger edge against the front shaft where you're banging on it. You just want to keep it straight while you're doing this. The difference in diameter isn't easy to spot on the workbench, but another way to tell them apart is the inner bearing is also a little wider than the outer bearing. Really, you can't get them mixed up. They won't let you. Since the balance shaft isn't quite large enough to drive the bearings back in, I use a chrome 32mm socket on a half inch extension for the inner bearing. I use the magnet to hold the bearing in place with the oil hole rotated around and press it into the bore with the socket. After a couple of taps to get it aligned, I like to flip the socket over on the extension so that it has less deflection while you're beating on it. Drive the bearing in and you're halfway there with the lock. Now with the inner bearing in place, it's time to seal off the outer bearing oil passage. Just rotate the bearing around like we did with the first one. I switched to a 32mm impact socket for this because they're a little fatter than the chromies. Just drive the bearing slightly deeper than the surface of the block so it doesn't put any pressure on the front case. This method is dirty. Since the bearings are made in layers, expect beating on them with the wrong tools to generate metal shavings. I like to use a nylon bristle brush crammed into a piece of conduit to reach in there and scrub the edges of the bearings so that those shavings don't wind up getting washed into the oil pan or sucked into the motor. I give the outer bearing the same treatment. You can see what this left behind. It's important to wash out all this junk left behind before putting the engine back in service. This destroys all the parts used in this modification. Even if you used a different shaft, you'll never get it back in these bearings. It mushrooms the outer edge of both the shaft and the bearings. So what? It's a balance shaft. They're going away. The reason I said that the 7 bolt case doesn't belong to 6 bolt is because the timing tensioner is different. The oil pan won't line up along the bottom edge of the timing side, and even if it did, the bolt holes for the oil pan are in the wrong places. None of the oil passages are correct where the case lines up on the block. Worst of all, this is how the oil filter housing ports line up. None of the oil passages are correct where the case lines up on the block. I won't be demonstrating what happens if you mix and match the wrong front case and fire the engine up, but what I will be doing is an HD version of the front case modification for a 6 bolt like I've already done for the 7 bolt, but that'll be in a later video. I don't need it finished yet, and there will be plenty to keep me busy in the meantime. Y'all keep it greasy, and if it's squeaky, grease it twice.